So we will study in this video how to write plain and written statement. So first of all we have to identify the name of the person. When we talk about a civil suit, the person who files a suit is known as plaintiff and the person against whom the suit has been filed is a defendant. In civil, when the petition is filed, the person who files a petition is a petitioner and the person against whom the petition is filed is respondent. In appeal, in criminal or in civil, the person who files is appellant and the person against whom it is filed is respondent. When we talk about complaint in criminal matters, the person who files a complaint is complainant and against whom it is filed is an accused. So these are the persons, the name of the person which we can represent them when we will write the plain written statement, appeal or complaint. So let us start with the general procedure to understand how to file a plain and written statement. So first of all, let's say there are two party A and party B. A want to file a suit against B. So in that case, A first of all give a notice to B through his advocate that he is going to file a suit against B. So if still by that notice B does not reply or reply in case that he does not provide the relief that A wanted and he is free to go court. So in that case A have to file a plaint to the court. Let's say P. Once the court accept the plaint, he summon the defendant that is B. Once the summon has been sent, within 30 days, B, the defendant has to file a written statement in the court. Okay, once the plaint has been filed in and within 30 days, the defendant filed the written statement. Then the court has to decide the issues that we say framing of issues. Once the court decides what are the issues to be decided by the court, the case starts. The court start the trial. It uh, asks plaintiff and defendant to provide their evidence. Once the evidence has been examined, witness has been examined, the judgment of the court came. So here we will discuss in this video the plaint and written statement. Most of the time when you ask any person about plaint and written statement, you will face an answer that it is tough, it is hard and uh, without an experience any person cannot do it. But the reality is the writing of a plaint or written statement is a simplest one. It is the simplest like writing an application for fever to get the holiday from a school like that. It is so easy once you get the basics. Most of the people does not know what is the basic points behind plaint and written statement. So in this video, here you can see the plaint is provided under order 7 of CPC. And these are the bullet points you can say important rules according to which you have to write your plaint and these rules will help you a lot rule there there are these rules one to four rules apply to written statement also but five to ten only apply to plaint so we will discuss one by one first of all in plaint state the fact and not the evidence the fact is so important you should not suggest in your plaint that what evidence are there on which you prove the fact. What you have to do is just write fact and not 
राइट एविडेंस अकॉर्डिंग टू विच दो फैक्ट हैव बीन प्रूव और गोइंग टू बी प्रूव बिकॉज देयर इज अ कोर्ट कोर्ट हैज टू डिसाइड दैट विच विच एविडेंस इज करेक्ट और नॉट यू कैन नॉट सजेस्ट द कोर्ट दैट यू कैन टेक दिस एविडेंस और यू कैन टेक दैट एविडेंस वॉट यू हैव टू डू इज जस्ट टू पुट योर फैक्ट इन टू योर प्लेट एंड नॉट द एविडेंस सेकेंड वन इज फैक्ट शुड बी इन कंसाइंस फॉर्म कंसाइंस मीन द शॉर्टेस्ट फॉर्म द फैक्ट शुड नॉट बी इन डिटेल्ड इट शुड बी ब्रीफ इट शुड बी शॉर्ट एज यू कैन डू टू मेक योर प्लेट ईजी टू अंडरस्टैंड फॉर द जजेस इन द कोर्ट द थर्ड वन इज सेपरेट फैक्ट शुड बी इन सेपरेट पैराग्राफ एंड नंबर कॉन्सिक्वेंटली every different fact which talks about different different things must be se- written in separate paragraph with number consequently we will discuss this point when i will teach you how to write actually uh, the format of plaint the fourth one is date sum and numbers all the sum all the numbers and all the date which is provided in your plaint should also be written in words the fifth one is the name of the party and address should be expressed once you start writing the plaint the two thing that is the most important is that the party's name and address should be correct the cause of action should be mentioned on which you ask for the relief the seventh one the fact the court has jurisdiction should be mentioned you have to mention in your plaint that the court in which you are asking for the relief has the jurisdiction to decide that case eighth one talks about fact related to what relief wanted should be mentioned those facts should be mentioned in your plaint which is, which helps the court to identify what relief you want and specifically stating the relief also fact related to any set of relinquishment or portion of claim if in your plaint your client set off any statement or set off any claim or relinquish any portion of the claim then you have to mention in your plaint that this kind of things is happened the 10th one is fact related to submission of court fee you have to mention in your plaint while writing that the court fee has been submitted so these are some of the important rules on which you have to write a plaint when you are going to write a plaint this point will help you a lot really really help you this this point will make your plaint easy to write now we will talk about written statement well written statement is provided in order 8 cpc that is code of civil procedure 1908 i told you when i was discussing about plaint that first four points are same and three points only differ when you write plaint so first the fact state the fact and not the evidence when you are writing a written statement written statement is your answer against the plaint so in that case you have to write a fact and not evidence the facts should be brief and concise in short form a uh, separate paragraph should be mentioned for separate uh, facts date sum and number should be expressed in word and expressed in number as well so now come the different thing that is the facts should be specifically denied if you are writing a written statement and your client denies any fact then you have to specifically deny a fact that you are not agreed to that fact or that fact is not true six talking about defendant can counter claim in written statement defendant can also claim his right if violated by the plaintiff that is known as counter claim 
defendant may ask for set off in his plaint the defendant can also ask for set off okay we have uh, studied some of the important points which will help you a lot in writing plaint written statement so now we will let we take an example of the format and with this example you will able to write your own written statement or plaint with ease so first of all what you have to do is have to mention this in the court of the name of the court like if you are filing a plaint in high court in the court of high court at new delhi or in the court of supreme court at delhi then the suit number came but you don't have to mention the suit number as when you file a plaint the registrar itself put a number on it now came the party name and address the plaintiff remember who files a case and defendant against whom the case has been filed so the person who filed a case will be mentioned prior to defendant you have to mention the name of the party and the address of the party as well versus is the name of the defendant and the address of the defendant now came the role of subject that what is you are asking for what your plaint is all about the subject of the suit now you have to file in your plaint some of the facts that you think that makes your plaint better now the points come the role of the points come in which facts uh, cause of actions and related things have to be mentioned so first of all you have to write plaintiff submitted as under now these number can vary you can write 20 30 40 as many as number as many as facts you want to write but that should be related to your case so here i just put an example like 1 to 5 point these are related points which relate to cause of action the circumstances that lead to ask for relief to the court here the role of your intelligence came once you study your client's case deeply you will able to find some of the facts that makes your case so strong and that fact should be mentioned here from starting to the end and now some of the important point that you will see in every plaint that the court has jurisdiction this has to be mentioned that court be court fee has been submitted this has to be mentioned and the value of the suit is under the pecuniary limits of the court this has to be mentioned and in the end you have to mention the prayer in prayer the plaintiff has to write the relief that you want after the relief has been written on the left side there should be a place and date right side the plaintiff and signature of the plaintiff and then came the part of verification here verification plays a important role in which the person who is filing the case acknowledge that what statement has been written in this plaint is true of his knowledge number of paras that are true of your knowledge and the number of paras that base on the advice of advocate that is what you call a verification and the same process will follow date place on the left side and right side the plaintiff name and signature so this is the format of a plaint when you write a plaint first the court name second the party's name the third one is subject of the suit and the middle talk about the facts jurisdiction court fee pecuniary limit prayer relief and facts on which you are going to ask for relief and then on the left side place and date right side plaintiff signature and then verification that how many paragraph you verify on your own knowledge and the rest of the paragraph on the advice of the advocate and then place on date and right side plaintiff signature so this is the format that how to write a plaint now we will talk about 
a written statement so when we talk about written statement is not so different as compared to plaint first the court name and suit number came then the party name now this is the change that you will see in written statement that party name versus the party name and defendant no need to write uh, address in it why because this is the answer of the plaint and plaint is in the plaint there is an address mentioned then the subject the suit is for and then the points of defendant on which defendants denying the facts of plaint so here can he specifically denied in the starting paragraph that defendant may specifically deny all the circumstances which is a state in the plaint now you can see that these are the para that is related to the plaint not in the written statement these paragraphs only are legal paras that is going to be mentioned in print and not in written statement if you are going to write these paragraph these points that court fee has to be submitted has been submitted or value of the suit is under pecuniary limit then the that written statement will not be correct you have not to mention any of these points as it is a legal paragraph but if you made a counter claim or made a set off then you have to mention some of the 